You think about there's been cancellations all through the season for teams that even started before we had started. A little bit of the problem we have is really not a lot of time to make those games up. So all of a sudden, right out the gate, uh, you get a postponement by two teams and just feel bad for the players and the coaches because there's so much you have to put into this to try to play. And then when something like this uh, pops up, there's really nothing you can do. Herm, how about them Lakers and them Dodgers, man? How about, how about them Lakers? How about them Lakers? Yes, yes, and the Dodgers. But I'm a Giant fan, Keith, so I got to make it. Uh, yes. the Lakers, I'm okay with. I'm, I'm a Laker guy, you know that. But but I'm but, but I'm a Giant fan. But I but I'm happy uh, for the Dodgers. I mean, they've been in it quite some time. It is, it is good to see them win a World Series again. Yeah. Now, Herm, we talk about this late start at, 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 in college football. Everybody else kind of got going. I think we're the last big conference to get going. What does this do for us with this late start? Well, I, I think one thing for us is that we're, we're in the mix uh, of playing football, and, and, and obviously there's two teams right now in our conference that that, um, that are ranked already without even playing a game. You think about Oregon and USC. So that tells you something about the people looking at those two uh, football teams saying, look, if, if they can win out, then obviously they might have a chance, uh, you know, to, to play in, in one of those uh, playoff uh, games. So it's kind of interesting when you look at it with only playing six games and maybe seven, obviously, if you, you know, go, go to the championship game. But uh, a lot of pressure uh, on every team in this conference and the fact that you don't have a lot of games and every game is important. What has practice been like in preparation uh, this week, taking on USC, a team that narrowly got out of – ASU last year with a victory for you guys, especially if you want to get to the Pac-12 title game? Well, I think our guys understand, um, you know, who we're playing. Uh, we played SC two years now that I've been here, and it's always gone to the fourth quarter. I mean, both games uh, that were played in, we won the first one uh, my first year here in the Coliseum by three. Uh, they got an early lead on us. It did a fantastic job of putting up points early, and then we kind of slowed it down and came back and had the ball at the end and lost by five. So uh, they've been close games in the fourth quarter, uh, very competitive games. And, you know, they, they have a football team with a lot of guys coming back, especially on offense as well as defense. You know this, key, Very, very talented. They have a lot of talented players on both sides of the ball. How you doing, Herm? Jay Williams here, man. How you holding up? I'm I'm doing well, my friend. You doing okay with those two guys? I, 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 you, you're just trying to keep them in check, aren't you? Man, you see, you see, Key has a USC varsity jacket on beside me now. It's every single day, man. I need you guys to come through. <laughs> well, that's his alma mater, you know, and I get it. Me and Key go way back, so it, look, I, I get it. I mean, this is what's great about college football, regardless of when you graduated and. You know, you're always going to – you're pulling for your college team. You know, my problem is I went to a couple colleges, so I didn't just go to one. <laughs> Herm, how do, you guys, how do you guys get prepared for a game like this, considering it's your first game, but also maybe potentially the biggest game of the year? Well, I just – you take it at that. It is the biggest game of the year because it's our first game. Uh, and I look at it that way. Uh, you know, I've always looked at games this way. Um, it's, it's – every game's important. I, I, I think they are uh, because – when you start putting more importance on other games, I think you lose the sight of what football is all about. It's about how you play the day you play. And they're all important games. I mean, you don't prepare all this time. I mean, look, we've been out for, what, nine months. There's been a lot of preparation to go into playing a football game. This is a funny sport. You actually practice more than you play. And so, for me personally, every game is important. I mean, if not, why, why, why do you play? Why do you have a schedule? All guests join us on the Shell Pins All Performance Line. Coach Herm Edwards is joining us on Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin. Herm, how did you how did you prepare on election day with all everything that's going on with your kids? What did you guys do on your day off? Well, we actually on Tuesday we knew it was coming. The whole the poll Pac-12 uh, decided on election day that we were going to give uh, the conference athletes uh, you know a day off. And um, we just treated it like a Monday. So Monday we came to work. Well, generally, you're off on Monday and you start Tuesday. So we just flipped it. They practiced on Monday. Um, you know, Tuesday they were off. Wednesday we got back to work Thursday. And now it is Friday here. And, and we're going to have a walkthrough here uh, 
shortly <laughs> and then get on an airplane and go to L.A. and then have another. We had our COVID test this morning already. Then we're, have another, we're going to have another COVID test when we get there around 430 through 630. Um, bed check around 10 o'clock, and then we have a 5 a.m. wake-up call on Saturday morning <laughs> for pregame. Mm. So, Herm, you've had a couple wide receivers here the last two years to go in the NFL draft, Nikhil Harry, the New England Patriots, and Brandon Ayak. Uh, Ayuk. Ayuk. Yep. Uh, go to San mm-hmm. Francisco. Now you got Frank Darby and my man Johnny Wilson, freshman out of Calabasas. How did they do in training camp? They've been fine. And, and Johnny is, is the guy, and you know him, Key. You watched him play. Uh, you know, he's, he's a talented player. His size catches you by surprise a little bit how big he is. And he's pretty fluid, uh, you know, being that big of an athlete. He has a big catch radius, which is always good. And, and Frank has kind of been a guy that, that, that's kind of, you know, been in the background a little bit. But now with Nikhil leaving and obviously Ayuk leaving, um, he's the guy that has all the experience at the receiver uh, position because, really, we're young at receiver. He's the one with all the experience. We only have one senior. It happens to be Frank. All the rest of those guys are either freshmen or sophomores. Herm, how important has your relationship with Jaden Daniels been? Uh, obviously, last year, you guys both were together mm-hmm. trying to get over uh, winning eight games, but it seems like that's a pretty unique establishment of a relationship. Well, it is, and I think anytime you're the head coach, you're going to be tied to the quarterback, but but he's a special young man. Uh, I, I like his poise. He has tremendous poise, uh, and, you know, and he's, he's about ball. I mean, he's He's starting to learn how to become a leader. That was the big thing for him this year. I told him, I said, now you you got to step into more of a leadership role because it's your football team. We're building this offense around you. So we meet every morning. He comes in every morning around 730, and we have our little chat. And we kind of talk, and then he he looks at his phone because, you know, he's getting all these, these kids get all these texts. You know, they're looking at their phone, and I said, Jaden. And, you know, we talk for about 10 minutes every morning. So uh, he's a good young man, I mean, and he's a good football player as well. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.